Okay, I'm doing something a bit different today, which is analysing a chess game here, but showing you the engine to the right hand side. So I'll be running Stockfish here, we've got Stockfish 15 turned on, I'm only going to run it to depth 16 each time, or the computer would just crap itself every single move, be lagging out. Now I'm going to look here at Hans Niemann versus Matteo Cornet. Cornet's picture is a bit chopped up there, I've had to mess around with the layout here, so sorry about that one. Now I'm putting the engine on here, just for a bit of something extra. Some people have asked me to actually put it on, show the lines, when looking at these Hans Niemann games, because this is one of the games which Yosha had a look at using Gambit Man's analysis, and this one showed 100% engine game correlation when they analysed it using however many engines were used. So let's see what happened here. Hans had the white pieces and he kicked off with pawn to d4. So we had d5 in response, c4, e6. The knight comes to c3, inviting the Nimzo Indian. And now here we had pawn h6, an offbeat way to play. And by the way, we've got all of Hans Niemann's annotations on the right hand side here. These were taken from chessgames.com. So this is fascinating to also have. So a really weird looking move, a kind of bunny ear move. You can set both bunny ears up if you go a6, etc. We had knight f3 now, knight coming to f6. And now here we had bishop to e3. And he was saying now at this point, Hans Niemann, that he expected pawn a6 here, forcing then the capture on d5, so as not to walk into d takes on c4 and b5. But instead we had this knight developing here, so Hans now develops the bishop to d3, because after black takes on c4, there's no a6 played, and so now when a6 comes, you've got time to go pawn to a4. So the pawn came to c5. Now we had castles, and Hans mentions here, this position is a transposition to a queen's gambit accepted, but the knight is on d7 instead of c6, and black has wasted a tempo with pawn to h6. I felt that this position, down one tempo, and with an inferior knight placement, would provide me with an advantage. Queen c7, another key waste of tempo. My opponent underestimated my potential initiative. And Hans then mentions here a line around taking on d4 instead of queen c7. But we'll stick with the game now. So Hans brings his queen to e2, protecting this bishop, preparing to meet this pawn takes on d4. Bishop d6 was now played. My opponent has wasted one tempo with pawn to h6, a second with bishop d6, and a third with queen c7. My next moves are very strong. So Hans takes on c5 here. We now had bishop recapturing. And now he pushes this central e4 pawn. He's gaining space, opening up his bishop, and also preparing to come to e5, cramping the black position. And so this is where Cornet goes knight g4, preempting that pawn push, and also looking to bring a knight into the e5 square. And Hans now goes h3. He kicks that knight away. Now the most natural looking move here is just retreating like this. This was playable but instead we had this knight coming here, a more tactical line, because it allows Hans to now take on g4, which he does. The knight now recaptures on c4, this was the idea, and you can't take back with the queen, or then you're walking into this tactic. Check, and you pick up the queen. So we didn't have takes on c4. Hans now pushes on with pawn to e5. He gains that space, and he says here, I believe the position is practically lost at this point. If black castles, I'll have moves like g4, g5, ripping things open, and I'll also have this knight c3, e4, f6 breakthrough. Additionally, the knight on c4 is extremely loose, and my opponent is begging me to put a rook on c1. So now we had bishop to d7. That's why the black king didn't castle, because of that huge attack. Bishop f4 develops, protects this pawn some more, eyes this critical d6 square, and now the knight comes to a5 here. Again, if you castle, you're getting hugely attacked. You know, you can see the moves on screen here. Bishop e7 is another. We see that soon. But knight a5 played, maybe looking to come into b3 one day. And now the knight comes to e4. Hits this important dark squared bishop and also clears the c-file for a rook to now develop. So the bishop drops back. You want to cover this square and this one. Now we had rook f to c1 played. 
picks up a tempo on the queen, and now we see this back and forth happening with hands white squared bishop here. So he drops into e3, queen comes here, the bishop tickles again with bishop to d2. So the queen goes back to b6, we had bishop e3 again, hand says, I decided to repeat because I was down to about 25 minutes. Queen to b4 back, there are many options here, but I decided to play the simplest one as black's position falls apart without the dark squared bishop. And you can see on screen here different moves suggested, but Hans goes for this knight d6 check one, like he says, simple continuation, taking off the dark squared bishop, but where this isn't simple for amateur players is assessing that this is good for white when you're about to start losing material. So black takes on g4, they also could have taken here, and you get similar themes, say bishop c5, queen f4, where the white pieces are just cutting up the king now. So you can't castle kingside, if you castle queenside, obviously that's looking really nasty. If you start trying to recycle the knight with knight c6, well we'll see problems with that soon, but you've got b4, b5 coming very fast knight into e5, so these are the persisting problems in the black position. So black takes this pawn instead, now we had the rook coming to the 7th, invading, hitting here, hitting here, and now again it's just very hard for black to play. So Hans mentions here, the pawn on g4 is irrelevant, black's pieces are dominated, and castling is basically impossible without also giving up a significant amount of material. So we had knight c6 now played, coming back, trying to re-coordinate, rook c1 doubles, so Hans doesn't even take the pawn here, he just brings more pieces into the attack, and now knight e5 was played, and Hans calls this the final mistake, e5 was a better try, this isn't actually such a good move, because now Hans has this opportunity to simplify into a crushing endgame. So you can't take that knight immediately, or you lose your queen on e2, but what you can do is develop this bishop, it comes to b6, now you really are threatening to take the knight with the queen, so it captures on f3, hands recaptures, queen takes, pawn takes, and now he says in this position, compare the rooks on c7 and c1 to the rooks on a8 and h8. It tells you everything you need to know about the position. So black now goes rook b8 to defend this pawn, by the way, if you go bishop to c6, looks so natural, well this is the hammer blow of a move. You can chop, pawn recaptures, and then this d-pawn is just decisive. Now king e7 is the best move, if you go to d8, well then we have this discovered check. The king's forced to go to e7 anyway, now we can do this, you make a queen and you do a double check, so neither one of those pieces can be taken, completely winning of course. And if instead of coming to d8, you come to e7, best move, will the same problems persist, you make a double check, that's a queen, completely game over. So we didn't have bishop c6, instead the rook came here. Now we had bishop to a7, rook d8 played, Hans picks up this pawn, he's preparing to invade with the second rook, we had castles by black, and now Hans doesn't yet invade, he first takes the time out to protect this pawn from the bishop, and he says here, consolidating the position and preparing to bring the second rook to the seventh file. The d-pawn is unstoppable. Seventh file. So e5 now from black, trying to give the bishop some room. The bishop nudged back to b6, rook b8 was played, hands doubles on the seventh, and now he mentions that the d-pawn is unstoppable, so we had the bishop coming to e6, if you try and take here, by the way, well then after rook recaptures, say bishop c6, well now rook e7, and once again that pawn is marching through, it just can't be stopped in combination with the bishop. So we had bishop e6 instead, now pawn d7, rook a8 was played, black can only shuffle, the bishop nudged back to c5, hits this rook, it moved away, bishop e7, and here the black player resigned the game. Hans mentions that the game may have continued like this. So here the rook could get captured, rook recaptures, king h8, b4, these final moves here, and you can see that white can literally just sit on the position, queen anytime they want, maybe create even a second pass pawn here, completely game over. So a crushing game by Hans Niemann there. 
Hopefully you enjoyed having the computer on on the side. I won't often do that one, but something different. If you want to see the game between Hans Niemann and Magnus Carlsen played in round three of the Sinkfield Cup, then do check out this one on screen. Hit that subscribe button if you never want to miss a future video. And thanks very much for watching. See you soon.